Hi everyone! I've been covering a lot of Kickstarter projects lately, and a lot of them involve printed material related to gaming, so I wanted to show you another one that I backed, and this one is Retro Magazine. Now this is really relevant right now because I backed them for a year subscription which came out to six issues, and uh, currently I think they're on issue number four, and they're about to deliver issue number five uh, within a few weeks or so. Anyways, it's really relevant because I backed them for the first year, and now they're seeking funding on the Kickstarter webpage for the second year. And uh, I just wanted to give my impressions of this and show you what I think about the first year so far. So, let's take a look. Alright, let me start with what they did well. When they created this project, they assembled essentially a dream team of everybody who's been a big name in the video game magazine publishing industry, and it really shows. Their articles are really well done, they're very well written, and they also cover a lot of subjects that I found very interesting. In each issue I received, there was always some article that I was immediately glued to and I had to read it right then. And some of their articles had a lot of useful information that I use today when I'm out collecting. The cover art is very well done. They always pride themselves on that, and whenever an issue was about to come out, they would always preview the cover of it just to get you interested and fired up for it. And uh, they even sell those as posters, I believe, so I think you could even buy those. Best of all, though, and this is pretty much the reason why I back them, they have Sean Baby. He is one of the funniest guys to ever write about gaming, and I'm really glad that they include him in here. And let me tell you, he was no disappointment. Each of his entries had me laughing my head off, so he really did deliver his best effort here. Unfortunately for this magazine, though, the bad outweighs the good. First of all, the format is a mess. Everything is blue and white, and it's all in the same font, so it looks really bland and cheap. It all blends together, so it's really hard to see when one feature ends and the other one begins. Also, maybe it's just me, but I always notice that a lot of the magazines, even to this day, they kind of have their own voice. For instance, you always knew if something was from Nintendo Power, or EGM, or PSM, whatever, you always knew that each magazine had its own voice, and it was pretty consistent from beginning to end. This magazine, though, it doesn't really have a voice, and maybe it's just because this magazine is very young. It hasn't had a lot of time to mature and get a consistent voice between all of its authors. But because the writing styles are so different from page to page, it's like every page has its own voice, and because of that, the whole magazine feels like just a collection of fan submissions. It really seems like this dream team is very underutilized. You would think that these great minds from all these different magazines could all come together and make, you know, one super good magazine, but at least at this point, I'm just not seeing that. And that leads me to my next point that I have to disclose. I only have issue 1 and issue 2. I think they're up to issue 4 now, and I don't know why, but those other two issues just never came into me. I've sent an email to them to alert them that I didn't get those issues, and to their credit, they responded in less than 24 hours on a weekend. So I don't think communication is a problem here. Uh, it might have just been an honest mistake that they didn't get the issues to me. Before I made this episode, I wanted to go online and uh, get the PDF copies of those issues, because at the tier that I backed, I do get an electronic copy of it. But as it turns out, I need my actual address stub, and I don't have those anymore, so I can't access the online version. But the biggest problem that I have with this magazine is that it just didn't turn out the way that I was expecting it to. In the pitch video, the project creator says that he's going to make this an American answer to the European retro gaming magazines, but unfortunately that just hasn't happened. Because the most notable difference is that with those European magazines, they devote the vast majority of their magazine towards the classic games, and a very small portion of it is towards, you know, indie titles that have a retro feel to them. With retro, it's the other way around. Most of the content is just about indie games and recent stuff that's coming out. So some of you might say, well, that's your problem. But I would argue that it's not. It's still Retro Magazine's problem, because you could get that coverage anywhere else. In any other up-to-the-minute video game news site like Kotaku or Polygon or Joystick, you could get that coverage, I guarantee you. So why does it have to be in Retro Magazine? I'd rather they use that space to cover something else. And so long as we're comparing it to Retro Gamer Magazine, I'll also tell you that it's way too short. Both the first and second issues are only 64 pages. I backed it at $35, and I think that's very expensive for a magazine that's so thin and is only 6 issues a year. I've really tried to think about what the problem is with this magazine, because again, they have such a talented group of writers here. 
But then it hit me, and I don't know if this is the true cause, but think about it. Those writers are contemporary writers. For instance, when they were covering Final Fantasy VII way back when, it wasn't because it was retro. They were covering it because it was contemporary. It was new at the time. So of course when they made this dream team, I can understand that they were thinking, the best way we could do that is by hiring the guys who were publishing the stuff back when it was new. But maybe that doesn't make a lot of sense, because that's like expecting an experienced news anchor man to be an avid historian. Just because he covered a story back when it was new doesn't mean that he cares about it now that it's history. I don't know if that's the reason why this magazine didn't turn out the way that I hoped it would, but for those reasons, that's why I'm sorry to say, but I will not be backing them for year two. From what I've seen so far, it wasn't what I was looking for, but maybe it's something that you will like, and I encourage you to go to their Kickstarter page and see if that's something that you're interested in. Now some of you might not like this video, especially because their Kickstarter project is still ongoing, so you're going to say that, oh, you know, you're a jerk, you're just coming here to bash their Kickstarter project and make it fail. But in my defense, they've got less than a week left, and the year two campaign is not doing nearly as well as the year one did. So I know I'm making a big assumption here, but maybe there are more people than just me who are unimpressed with the magazine so far. But they did reach their funding goal, and I sincerely wish them the best of luck with their magazine. That's all I have for today. Thanks for watching, guys.